So we've heard God's word there about the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Very, very precious words that we need to think about. We talk often and think a lot about the life, life in the Spirit, the life of the Christian, the life in the Spirit. And there are different aspects to that, but, but what does it look like? Now, there are several pictures and, and, and themes in the Bible to explain this, but I just want to draw attention to four of them. We can look at them, you can look at them in your own time and discuss them with John and others within the church. Three of them we already touched on in the reading that we just heard. We know of the fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 5, 22 to 26. We read, we heard in the reading now, Galatians 5, 16, mention of walking in the Spirit. And it describes the work of the Spirit and living in the Spirit as being part of our daily routine. It's part of what we are, it's part of what we do. Then in Ephesians, in chapter 5, in verse 18, there's talk about being full of the Spirit. But I want to look today a bit more at verse 18 in Galatians 5, about being led by the Spirit. And we're going to do that today by looking at three things. Firstly, our need to be led, our need for guidance. Secondly, how we are to be led. And thirdly, what are the results of being led? So those uh, three points. Firstly, our need for guidance, our need to be led. I've already refer referred to the fact about when we come to faith, we're aware of the reality of the change that happens in our hearts when we are reborn in the Spirit and we come to know Jesus when we come to faith. But we're also very, very aware about the reality of a battle in our lives, so we're aware that it's not plain sailing from when we come to believe. And one of the most difficult areas is guidance. Sometimes we're tempted to turn back, to go back. And many of us have experienced that, but what does going back mean? Well, it can mean some of the obvious things that Galatians 5 talks of. Do you remember that list? Idolatry, sorcery, Enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions. Very, very obvious and public things. But sometimes when we drift away or go back, they're not necessarily as obvious or public. I'm reminded of the message to the church of Laodicea. Because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Very stern warning about losing that passion, losing that closeness in our relationship with the Lord. And sometimes we're tempted to do that. But that, what has that battle got to do with guidance and, and life in the Spirit and leading of the Spirit? And the answer is that we do have the capacity to justify wrong things, to justify what we want to do. That's alive and well in all of us. We can make unwise decisions that could be an obstacle to God's blessing. If we doubt that at all, we only have to look to two places. We have to look at the centuries of foolish and unwise decisions made by God's people over the years. They and us were not always a great advert for the gospel. And the second place we have to look is at ourselves. It's not something that's a problem for other people and not for us. I'm very, very familiar. I'm too familiar with my capacity, yes, to stumble, yes, to do stupid things, but then to compound that by justifying them, justifying wrong things. So the idea of guidance by the Spirit is very attractive. To have someone who is wiser than me, who is always with me to guide me, is very attractive. But how does that happen? How does that work? That's what we'll look at in the next section now.